Hello everyone, back to you into today's video. Going to have a look at one of its week's 10 days. In today's video, we'll also have a look at CFS V2 uh, for the next month. That will take us more or less to the end of November. So we're going to be winding down towards the end of the autumn, can you believe, uh, with this update. Of course, some um, meteorological autumn running from the 1st of September to the 30th of November. Um, so uh, always a little bit uh, different when it comes to sort of astronomical autumn, which uh, it tends to run from the 21st of September to the 21st around 21st of December. So um, it uh, just helps have a defined period, really, when you can look at the statistics. And uh, statistically, meteorological uh, autumn is the 1st of September to 30th of November, which means this video will more or less be taking us to the end of the uh, autumn season. So uh, we're going to have a look at CFSV2. I'll have a look at one of those weekend days as well. I'll go on with that view in a second. Before I get on with that though, just to say that tomorrow, quite an exciting day because we're going to be opening the Christmas shop for another year, which means if you've got any Christmas shopping to do at Amazon between sort of tomorrow and Christmas, then you'll be able to do it through Gaz Weather Vids and uh, I'll talk you through the process of what you do with that tomorrow but um do your Chris shopping at amazon but go from gas Office to amazon and uh that will be helping website so i'll take you through all of that tomorrow and also on the first november we always uh, do the first video update for christmas as well We've done a few written posts about christmas during october but tomorrow the videos will begin and uh we'll be counting down to uh, the Christmas period. So it's going to be quite an exciting day coming up tomorrow. We'll also have uh, Terry Scully's November forecast. We'll have the five day forecast from Gaz Ovis and also a video looking at week 10 day time frame also. So it's going to be loads and loads of updates coming up tomorrow. But before all of that, we've got to get on with today's update. So we're going to begin by having a look at the Arctic Oscillation and the North Atlantic Oscillation Indexes. So the black line here tells us where we've been with the Arctic Oscillation. The red lines at the end where the GFS ensembles are forecasting the Arctic Oscillation to go. Remember, this is just an index that's reflecting the state of the atmosphere. It's not driving anything. It just tells you what the atmospheric setup is doing over North Pole. When the AO is uh, positive, it tells you you've got low pressure up over the pole. When the uh, AO is uh, negative, it tells you that you've got high pressure up over the pole. And a negative Arctic Oscillation with lots of high pressure over the pole is the route to pushing out cold air from the pole down into mid latitudes in uh, winter. So one of the things we look at, it isn't a guarantee of anything because it depends where the high pressure, where the blocking is sitting, it can be sitting in a position that it pushes the cold air down into America, for example, or Asia. So it's not a guarantee that we will get cold if we have a negative Arctic oscillation. But it is one of the things that we keep an eye on as we go through the autumn, particularly into the winter. You'll be seeing these charts turning up more and more uh, through the course of the uh, winter. So back to the summer, we can go right way back into the summer with this. We see that the Arctic Oscillation was generally in its positive phase through the summer. Uh, and into the autumn as well. That's 1st of September just there. The black line then goes negative for a time. Uh, during the second half of September and into October, but only briefly. And then through October, the Arctic Oscillation has generally been in its positive phase. Where we are right now is uh, slightly positive to uh, neutral with the AO. But look what the GFS ensembles are predicting as we go through into November. A strong positive phase of the Arctic Oscillation is being predicted here. This is possibly the strongest phase of the AO that we've seen since last winter, which was a pretty uh, positive AO winter. So it is going for uh, low pressure, or the GFS ensembles are going for low pressure to be up over the pole as we go into the first half of uh, November. Strongly positive, therefore, with the Arctic Oscillation in the first week or so of November before a gradual drop begins to take place. But even then, staying very much on the positive side, uh, even into the middle part of November. So it does look as though we can expect to see the polar vortex strengthening uh, which keeps the cold air primarily bottled up over the pole, although you can get uh, cooler winds from the northwest. 
into uh, the UK and Europe. We might get a little bit of that. But overall, no sign of a sustained blocking period here. If anything, it is uh, the reverse from that Arctic Oscillation chart. North Atlantic Oscillation is the same idea. So again, it's just an index that's reflecting the state of the atmosphere this time in the North Atlantic, as opposed to the North Pole. Um, and again, we can go back into the summer. The black line tells us where we've been with the NAO. The red lines at the end where the NAO is forecasting the, uh, where the GFS summers are forecasting the NAO to go. So we had the two indexes out of sync through the summer, interestingly. We was uh, positive there with the NAO in the middle of July, but then a change took place through July and into August and really into September as well when the NAO uh, went negative at the same time as the AO was generally in its positive phase. So that's quite unusual. Since October, though, the two index indexes have tended to come back into line. So through the first half of October, we go positive with the NAO, as we did with the AO, although we have been a bit negative with the NAO again just recently. GFS ensembles, though, are forecasting at the same time as the AO is going very positive they're also forecasting the NAO to go very positive as well, to go uh, into positive territory. So this tells us that not only are we going to have the, uh, the Arctic Oscillation in its positive phase, which will be strengthening the polar vortex and uh, having low pressure up over North Pole, we've also got the NAO going into its positive phase as well, which tells us that uh, low pressure will be strengthening around Iceland, high pressure will be strengthening through the Azores, and all in all this is a strong zonal signal as we're going into November. It looks like Wesley's will be strengthening through November, November, which is probably going to be quite a mild signal, I would have thought, though I say you can get cooler air from the northwest at times, but certainly not sustained cold weather while these two indexes are in such positive territory as we're seeing predicted here by the GFS Ensemble. So it is looking rather zonal at the moment, certainly for the first half of uh, November anyway. That said, we are going to get some cooler weather at times. So these are the GFS temperature and precipitation on so I was looking at Northampton today, I thought I'd go local uh, to where I am. So uh, the red line here is the 30-year uh, upper air temperature average in Northampton. Uh, we're starting off above average today. We're back into quite a warmish uh, air mass. We've got a cooling trend through the start of November. This is the first week of November just here, we see the trend is generally downwards. So a little bit of a cooler snap actually coming up over the weekend. Would be surprised if we don't have some uh, frost for bonfire night. Uh, and by the way, we will be doing the third update for bonfire night uh, this evening. After that, we lift the temperatures back up through the middle part of uh, next week, or the early part of next week, before a bit of a drop takes place, and then we lift up again. Actually, that's, it's a little bit of a zonal sine wave that we're seeing there. So uh, warmer just here. Uh, cooler just there, warmer there, uh, cooler there, warmer there, cooler there, and so on, up and down with the temperature. And that is indicative of, uh, and then we lose the signal later on, but probably a bit of a warmer phase just there. That is indicative of zonality, because what happens with zonality is that you push through a warm sector with an area of low pressure. Initially, you get the warm front. Behind it, you'll get a cold front going to colder sector. Then the next area of low pressure rolls in, brings the next warm sector, followed by the cold sector, and so on. Once you get to winter, you will think that these average each other out and you finish up around average. But actually, in winter, zonality will lead to milder than average conditions. And the reason for that, despite the fact that you're getting warmer and colder sectors, the colder sectors aren't enough to produce, or usually aren't enough to produce particularly cold weather. They aren't enough to produce frost, certainly aren't enough to produce snow away from mountainous areas. And in any case, before the colder, colder, cooler sector can get through, the next warm sector is rolling in. So although you're getting warmer and colder sectors, in winter, zonality will nearly always lead to milder than average condition. You can get cold zonality, which is quite rare for this country, where um, you bring the air out of Canada and Greenland across the Atlantic, and that can be a little bit colder than average. But that's unusual for us. Typically, zonality in winter will lead to milder than average condition. It's a little bit different in November because these colder sectors in November can still be enough to drag the overall temperature down. 
Uh, and then in terms of uh, precipitation, so a lot of dry weather coming up until the weekend. We get some rain on Friday night into Saturday. Could be quite wet then. Then we go a bit drier early next week before more rain comes through uh, during the middle part of next week. But overall, you wouldn't say that is a particularly wet ensemble. So certainly for the south and the southeast, reasonable amount of dry weather coming up will be wetter, I would have thought, with this zonal signal up in the north and in the west too. Uh, these are the surface temperatures and air pressure for uh, Northampton. So again, we're starting off uh, around there, around 15 degrees. Gradually cooling things down into the end of the week and the weekend, going under uh, 10 degrees just then. And there is a risk of some frost coming along as well at the weekend and into the start of next week before the temperatures pick up a little bit for a few days. And then they drop again. That's another cooler sector coming through. And then they sort of flat line at around 10 degrees Celsius in the second week of November. That's as we lose the zonal uh, sine wave. You see generally frost three nights coming up till the weekend. Uh, then possibly at the weekend, we do have a risk of some uh, cooler frosty nights coming through. And maybe some more there as we go into the middle part of the month. The uh, air pressure looks like this, so we're starting off at around 1,025 millibars at the moment, generally lowering the pressure to uh, the end of the week and the weekend before lifting pressure back up again as we go through uh, the course of uh, next week, but a lot of scatter in with that. Uh, as you get these cooler sectors coming through, the pressure does rise temporarily before dropping as the next low pressure uh, comes in. So uh, you expect to see the air pressure bit up and down, really, when you're in a zonal type situation. Temperature anomalies look like this for next week, 31st of October to the 8th of November. Close to average, uh, not a great deviation. It looks like the warmest temperature anomalies are being pushed into eastern parts of Europe. Precipitation anom anomalies for the 31st of October to the 8th of November look drier than average in the south and southeast, closer to normal in the northwest. I would expect to see the north and west becoming wetter on these charts in the next few days. The south and the east may hang on to uh, largely drier than average conditions. This is the GFS for uh, Saturday, Then We're bringing a cold front down across the country on Saturday, probably bringing outbreaks of rain uh, with it. That clears out of the way, and we bring this cooler or even colder air down from the northwest for Sunday, bonfire night. So we could have a 30 chilly bonfire night uh, this year. But then by Monday, we're back into this warmer sector. You see what I'm talking about with the zonal sine wave. We've got the uh, cold front moving southwards there. Uh, on Saturday, introducing that cooler sector of air. That cooler sector of air is properly through the country on Sunday. Doesn't last long, though, and by Monday, we're back into a warmer sector with these southwesterly winds coming through there. There is going to be a cold front there, and that cold front is just there. So essentially, you've got the warm uh, sector there, and then you've got the cold sector there. And behind the cold front, um, so actually visibly, should say you've got the uh, cold front there, you've got the warm front just there. So the warm sector will be here, and this is the warm front, of course, just there. Uh, the cold sector will be there, and this is uh, the cold front, of course, just here. So on Monday, we're in a warm sector of air uh, behind, the, um, behind the warm front, but not yet pushing that cold front uh, through. We go through to uh, Tuesday, still largely in that warm sector of air on Tuesday. By Wednesday and into Thursday, the cold front dips southwards and that takes us back into the cold sector uh, once again. But by day 10, which is Friday 10th of November, it looks like we're going back into that warmer sector, uh, into another warmer sector of air once again. So there's probably a warm front coming through just here and then the cold front is around uh, there somewhere. So we're going back into a warm sector by the look of it by Friday 10th of November. If we was to run on beyond that, again, we're still in that warm sector on Saturday the 11th of November, but by Saturday the 12th of November, we're back into a cold sector again as the cold front has pushed through and turns the winds into the north and west. And then, actually quite speculatively, this riding to the middle part of November, very extended range of a GFS, the winds are turning into the north then and bringing a much uh, more sustained 
colder shot down across the country probably wouldn't last more than two or three days before milder air topples back in from the Atlantic. But that does look like a more definitive colder interlude there, colder snap through the middle part of November, which you can get in a zonal situation, but it won't typically be sustained unless you have a build of pressure over the Arctic. ECWF looks like this on Sunday, so uh, bringing that to colder sector three, which may lead to uh, something a bit colder for bonfire night. Early next week, we build this ridge in across the country from the Atlantic. Now, the GFS makes more of this ridge than the, the ECM, I should say, makes more of this ridge than the uh, GFS. So as we go through the course of next week, actually high pressure takes over. And this is how we finish up on day 10, under an area of high pressure. Now, there might be some quite cold nights with that, with the ECM. And there might be uh, miss some fog as well. So a little bit different, not as zonal with the ECM compared to the GFS. The two miles they were split yesterday on the way forward for next week. They're still split today, uh, quite interesting. And particularly for England and Wales, there could be a lot of dry weather next week. And perhaps fairly chilly under that ridge at times. Finally, just have a look at CFS V2 for the next month, and uh, we've got 500 bit of our heights broken down into week periods. The first week period takes us from today, 31st of October, to the 6th of November. We've got above average heights out to our west, through there, below average heights up there. We do something like that with the flow and with the jet stream. So a lot of dry weather, the southern and southwestern parts of the country. Then it turns very unsettled from the 7th to the 13th of November. Low pressure is properly coming through here. Uh, not overly warm because the flow is on a northwest southeast trajectory there. So it's very unsettled. There'd be quite a lot of wet weather. But temperatures will probably be no better than average. And for the north, maybe a little bit on the cooler than average side as the air is coming out of Greenland. Week 3 is the 14th to the 20th of November with low pressure just to the northwest of the country. Again, doing something like that with the flow and with the jet stream. That looks very unsettled again there. And uh, again, it isn't overly warm. The flow is off the Atlantic or the wind is off the Atlantic, so it's not cold. But because the uh, alignment is generally northwest to southeast with the jet stream here as this high pressure is sitting there. Uh, so the flow is coming out of Greenland, typically. Uh, just There will be warmer sectors, of course, but it isn't uh, overall particularly mild. And then we go through to uh, week four, which is the 21st, 27th of November. It still looks a bit unsettled, really. The CFS um, might be going a bit over the top, I think, today, with this unsettled signal uh, still bringing the flow through. That's probably a bit milder, though, uh, as the wind is reverting more west, uh, southwesterly. But the CFS is going for a very changeable uh, November there. I'm not sure about that. It might be a little bit over the top there. Certainly, there's nothing in the shorter range, whilst the GFS and the ECM, to suggest it gets quite as unsettled as that in the next week to 10 days. And actually, they are still split for the next week to 10 days, as they were yesterday. So the GFS is very strongly zonal, and I taught you through how uh, zonality works um, with the warmer and the colder sectors. But the ECMF is much more anticyclonic for next week. Will therefore be a little bit colder, especially so at night, and could be quite foggy as well. So we've got to wait a little bit longer to see how things are going to work out uh, next week. Been a, quite a sustained um, video, been quite a long video. This one I just wanted, wanted to talk you through how this idea of zonality and the warmer and colder sectors are working. So I hope you found that um, in Interesting and informative. Tomorrow, we've got loads of updates. Five-day forecasts. We'll have a look at weather next week to 10 days. Uh, we'll also have Terry Scott's November forecast. And in the evening tomorrow, the Christmas updates will begin for 2017. Uh, I know they're a little bit mixed with the reactions. Some of you enjoy them. Some of you aren't all that keen on them until we get to the first, uh, until we get sort of a week or so away from uh, Christmas or a couple of weeks from Christmas. So if you don't enjoy them, then, um, well, just skip over them. If you do enjoy them, they're starting again tomorrow evening. So uh, keep an eye out for them uh, and that's all for now thanks for watching